Hey Queens, this is Ebony from Queens, Recognize Queens, and this is take two of Sunday Soul Chat. Apparently I have to do it from my phone and I can't do it from my computer. So today I will be on with the amazing, amazing life coach and life and transformation coach, Martha Hornby. And she's also the owner of the company called Presence Is My Purpose. And today we're going to be talking about letting it go. So I am like buzzing. So I'm super excited for this um, for this discussion. So if you're joining us or you're watching this on the playback, let me know. All right, now I have to figure out what we're doing. Oh, my screen won't go down. Oh my goodness, you guys. Technical difficulties today. Martha, where are you at, girl? So while I wait for her to join, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this group and choosing to show up here. If you don't know, I did have a queen chat before and it was super amazing, super awesome. Um, but this one I created because it's a discussion and it's us queens growing and blooming together. And I just love that. So it looks like she happy Sunday, everybody. So I am drinking water. If you've been following me on Instagram. I've been sharing my journey of going meatless and within the next, within the past two weeks, I've only eaten salmon twice. Um, and today I had a little piece of bacon. I was like, oh, I forgot. Um, approve. Hey, hey. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Oh my goodness, right. we are 10 minutes to the T late. So it's 3.43. <laughs> so that's technology. still very magic. Yeah, technology yes. happens. I couldn't do it from my computer. There was no buttons. So when I did it from my phone, I was like, oh. Perfect. Clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So happy Sunday. How are you feeling? Awesome. You look like you are. Yeah. I love Sundays. I do too. I love <laughs> My, I really do. I, I love all days, but Sundays are definitely my favorite. So today, I don't know if you've seen it, I shared the clay mask that I had on. Oh, nice. Which, that's just, you know, we, we should get you. I'm used to that. Like, I'm like, okay, Sundays, do something for yourself. Yep. You know, be a little. Yep. So, thank you so much for joining me here in this space today. Um, and even looking at your website, you're just so amazing. And I feel like you just have all this energy to express and just so you guys know how we met so let me just back check a little mm -hmm. bit so martha and i were speakers at clarity connects thank you so much clarity such an amazing phenomenal event put on for us which is so amazing um and her talk was about letting go um and even up leading up to the event like we just really connected and when i got to the event i thought it was I saw her, but it was actually her best friend. So it was just super cool and we just really connected. So just continuing that conversation and the momentum from everybody's like amazing speech. I thought it was like imperative that we have this conversation about letting it go. And it totally ties into me talking about soundtracks because a lot of times it's hard to let those damn soundtracks go or even know what they are, right? So you have a phenomenal story. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're at and your business is called presence is my purpose. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like how you got there and what, how I see it is like your return to your throne. Like, that's just how I see it. Truly. Um, yeah. <clears throat> hmm. so a couple of years ago, I was living a life that looked totally normal, totally happy, white picket fence, the whole nine yards. And I had been doing self-work for a really long time. Um, and I just, for some reason, couldn't break through. Like, I, I wasn't happy. And I realized that 
it really boiled down to not being able to let go of being bred to be a people pleaser, which I think a lot of us are. Um, and that was really my last piece. And it meant that I had to stop escaping that. I had to really start telling the truth all the time, um, which means that, you know, attachment to situations and relationships, like I had to be willing to dissolve those attachments in order to honor myself. And that's mm. mainly what it boiled down to was that I, I wasn't living a life that was honoring my own heart. I was busy trying to honor everybody else's. Um, so I started to make those shifts and everything changed. Everything yeah. changed. Mm -hmm. And I so feel that. And I feel, you know, I really do believe it's never too late because mm -hmm. even if you're able to obtain, and this is what I really think the purpose of life is. So if you're new to this group and you're new to me, like I am just, I take, I question every freaking thing. Like mm -hmm. you cannot just tell me something. I'm like, oh, okay. Like I question everything. Why do we eat the breakfast that we eat? Why is fuck shit and bitch a curse? When sometimes <laughs> saying that feels really good. Why couldn't it be milk? Why is milk called milk? And when you, you know, then you can get into like what mm -hmm. words really mean and that type of thing. And then that's mm -hmm. just a whole nother crazy realm to learn. But, you know, in life, how sometimes like everybody has different moments of fires of what I call them, where you're just like, I can't take this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not happy. And let's talk about like numbing that and like ignoring mm -hmm. that. And like for you, what would have that looked like for you? Like of ignoring Ooh. that, that voice. Um, the way that it played out in my life most often, I mean, it was, it was always escapism. Um, but I tried to do it in ways that were socially acceptable. So that would, you know, that meant like a Xanax prescription in the purse at all times. And, um, it meant, you know, wine with the ladies several nights a week, not just a glass. Yeah. yeah like right. big time. Um, and that was, that was actually the most difficult decision that I've ever made. I remember exactly where I was sitting and exactly what I was doing. The moment that I knew that I was going to stop escaping my reality, like my emotional and mental reality. Um, and I knew like when I, I made that commitment to myself and I knew that the entire landscape of my life was going to change and that from the outside, it was probably going to look like it was falling apart. Right. But on the inside, it was going to be falling together. So yeah, no more, no more getting, you know, tipsy, no more, like no more escaping basically my triggers because <clears throat> for me, my triggers are opportunities every time. Um, every time something comes up that makes me uncomfortable or makes me want to sort of retreat out of a situation socially or whatever that might be, I had to start diving into my triggers when I stopped escaping. And it was really, really scary to do. But the like, you do it once and it's terrifying and you do it twice and it's maybe a little bit less terrifying. Um, yeah. Yeah. And once it's you get you- I remember so meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what it was well, for me. So I, I love that you said that because in part of when I work with people and you're a coach as well, mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing, phenomenal coach. And one of the questions that I ask is what are your triggers? Because we don't mm -hmm. think of those things. And sometimes mm -hmm. even us saying that, so just to clarify for some, like for me, my triggers at certain ages would have been like talking about my dad, mm -hmm. my relationship with my mom. Um you know, situations that I had been in that evoke unworthiness mm -hmm. and shame and, mm -hmm. um, you know, all these different things. Those are your triggers because when you think about them, they hurt. Yeah. You know, they hurt. People have to pay attention to all these other magical things, somewhat, somewhat not, that are mm -hmm. happening. Like your heart physically hurts. You know, your mm -hmm. heart is physically, you feel the ache, you know, and I love that we're bringing up and talking about as a society what 
how we numb and how we escape different things, social media, yeah. you know, and for everybody, it's different shopping for some people, yeah. it's eating for some people, it's working out for like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Where you're so obsessive about it, mm -hmm. you know, that you're, there's really just some pressing issue that you're kind of just not wanting to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's like when I have work to do that I don't necessarily want to do, I'm doing random things. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to see my nails and I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> We go for a walk like no you need to do your, you know so I think it's amazing that we're talking about it and the fact that we have accepted as a society that taking pills and having them in your purse mm -hmm. these man-made things um that's the way and and natural medicine is considered alternative so yeah. little yeah. tidbit we'll save that for a different longer yeah. discussion but I love that we're talking about that because this is what we need to realize to really bust past those triggers like brick walls and mm -hmm. um, push through. So I know one of the other things you've said, and for those of you that might have joined a little bit late today, we're talking about um, the art of letting go mm -hmm. um, with Martha Hornby. Her website is Presence is My Purpose, um, and we have some great things for will share with you at the end. Um, Talking about soundtrack, one of the other things you said that you kind of kept saying to yourself, if I'm correct, was what's wrong with me? Yep. Yeah. I, and I can't tell you when that song started playing either, because okay. it was in there, like, wrong yeah, <laughs> for real. It had been in there for who like, knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Where do I even begin with that? Oh my goodness. It was always what's wrong with me. It, it was always an internalization of other people's negative thoughts, feelings about me. Um, and that's kind of huge. And when I'm talking, even in like normal day to day life, I, I bring this stuff up with people all the time. Um, I think that most of us have that playing somewhere in our head, at least, you know, at some point. Um, there's this meme I'm just going to mention. It's something along the lines of, like, before, before you – what is that? Oh, my goodness. Like, before you think or diagnose yourself, like, as something wrong with you, maybe you need to look at the people that you're surrounding yourself with. It's a little bit crude, but that's basically what it says. Yeah. And I had, you know, built this life of people around me who loved me like the me that was the people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about being a people pleaser and being in relationships that are built on that is that that job is never over. Like, and you don't get to take a break from it either. Um, right. Yeah. Um. And that's powerful. And I talk about that all the time, just like I did a seven day self love challenge last year. And mm -hmm. I was saying one of the best things you could do is spend a whole day on talking about no. Mm -hmm. Kids say it and you can tell they just freaking love it. You know, mm -hmm. they're like, no. Yeah. No. Like they just freaking love it so much. And we yeah. don't say it. And it's not powerful to answer a question when someone says, hey, do you want to go out? And you're like, yeah, that's, that's no. Like mm -hmm. it's yes is affirmative. No is Yeah. Affirmative. Can I say yeah. that? Can I say the F word? Yeah. My mantra, yeah. my mantra this year is if it's not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no. And that's in my personal life and in my business life. Um, <laughs> because like, if I'm not a hundred percent committed to whatever is going on in the moment, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, why would Shoshana I said your happiness is all that matters. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And like, nobody's teaching us that when we're little, like you talk about kids saying no, you know, like think about, um, all the times that you're rewarded as a child in our society, at least in my experience, the times that you're rewarded for being like a good kid. And what that really means is by maybe not expressing what's actually going on with you at the time. <laughs> so this stuff runs deep. And as adults, you know, whatever may have happened to us in the past, it's our responsibility right now to take a look at that and decide who we want to be today, you know, aside yeah. from whatever happened before. Yeah. Girl, that is so huge. And at a really young age, somehow I had this revelation that, 
everyone kind of stumbled in their childhood because at mm -hmm. some point I had noticed, okay, my childhood is not normal. Like this is not normal. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> to go to my aunt's house, my aunt, she's a part of this group group and Noni love her so much thank you so much for being here as well but I would go to her house and see her with her husband him being mad at her he'd be like honey you know like but in my house it was like bitch and yeah. slapping and cops and yeah. like, they knew us they knew them you know I knew that my childhood was chaotic and I knew at a young age okay it actually helped me forgive my parents for being who they were um which was they're only doing their best based on mm -hmm. what they've learned and they've mm -hmm accepted about life and now they brought me into this life and it's not easy raising children I have three and I'll be the first to admit that raising kids they're their own human beings and souls as well and they have their purposes you know we're not here to impose our will on them you know so that's another learning lesson in itself so yeah you know so important to you know and I even have said in a live before you know one of the things that I do to ask myself is like, okay, is the little girl Ebony talking to me right now or talking me out of something? Or mm -hmm. is the queen Ebony talking to me? Because mm -hmm. the queen mm -hmm. Ebony says what Martha says and she yeah. says, fuck yes. Yeah. Like yes or fuck no. Like it's yeah. not happening. Don't want to do it. I'm going to preserve my energy and my time for me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And a lot yeah. of the work that I do, like you said, preserve your energy. Like that's what it is. Like when we're walking around with that song playing in our head like what's wrong with me what's wrong with me we are spending every single ounce of energy that we have on trying to fix what's wrong with us like in my marriage before I ended like maybe if I lost some more weight because I gained a few pounds maybe if I lost weight maybe if I changed my hair maybe if I buy different clothes all of these things right internalizing yeah. a problem that was actually somebody else's and how much energy I spent on all of that and when I finally just stopped and I was like, wait, how do I, how do I feel about the way that I look? How do I want my hair? You know, what yeah. clothes do I want to wear? When I stopped spending energy on external validation, my whole life changed. My whole yes. life changed. Yeah, yeah. truly. And just talk about it because of, wait, hold up. Oh. <laughs> you have to point out your freaking age. Because that was okay. the <laughs> Because you guys don't understand <laughs> this life is just, it's more magical than a lot of us will accept it mm -hmm. to be. And I do believe you can be a hundred and still look 50. Mm -hmm. It's all in your mindset. It's all in how you perceive life and what getting old is. And how old are you? I turned 40 last month. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I saw you speak on stage and you said that, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> No way, like she looks amazing. So happiness and reverse mm. aging. Yeah. You know, when you're unhappy, you look older. Mm -hmm. The key to looking young is not all this other stuff. You know, it helps maybe, but it really is your mindset and your happiness level. You know, mm -hmm. smiling, I think, actually works some good muscles. Totally. <laughs> totally. And that's like speaking of that, like smiling, when I when people ask about like when my change happened or what changed. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I had never actually been smiling. Like I would, I would do like the yeah. photo smile, right? Or I would do like the appropriate laughter. <laughs> but since I started just trying to live my life to the fullest, like to serve my own heart, I like, I laugh my ass off and I smile all the time. And literally not kidding you last year when I turned 39, I realized I had dimples. I never had dimples before. Like they, wow. yes. And I earned them. Isn't that Yay. funny? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is not ever too late to, to figure out what makes you happy. It'll change sure. everything. Mm -hmm. For sure. I agree mm -hmm. on that. So we're going to be ending. And if you guys are just joining, we're talking about the art of letting go. So we'll definitely have this available on our sites and we'll give you some more information within mm -hmm. the comments. Um, Orenda Bachar. Bichert, hopefully I'm saying that right. She said she loves that fuck yes. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see the comments. Mm -hmm. And then Kim Dunbar said gorgeous. So maybe develop was. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> you guys definitely play this back because it has so many gems and even just listening to Martha's speech I just was like wow this is just like 
power packed with so many different valuable pieces of information. And it's kind of like you woke up, you know, it kind of mm-hmm. was just like your awakening of mm-hmm. like, okay, no more. And I know Literally. people feel that. And, you know, just ending it and like, how did you get into your healing? And how did you approach, um, you know, what that looked like for you? I had been reading and watching videos and doing all this stuff for a really long time. My secret, which I tell everybody, what really shifted things for me. So I was doing the meditating and the yoga and I was doing all the things and taking workshops and seeing, you know, a psychotherapist, the same guy for 10 years. He's amazing. Um, what really broke down like my final barriers where I started to see a transition externally in my life is that I stopped trying to hide my demons, right? So I stopped trying to press down the things in myself that would be normally called negative or looked at as negative. So like my anger, I like somebody memed it at some point, I wrote this big post and I was like, listen, when I am operating from my heart, even my rage is holy. Like I earned that and I can fully express that as a human being. So yeah, learning sort of how to fully express the things in myself that would be considered negative, which, you know, we're, we're programmed to not do, um, Mm -hmm. especially as women. Um, that was huge for me. Just, I kind of threw myself into experiencing my duality in my body instead of just in my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, We spend all this time talking about, you know, enlightenment or like ascension or all these different things that sort of get you focused on being somewhere else, like moving forward or somehow externalizing. And when I started to just focus on being in my body, what am I really feeling about this? Like really learning how to lock into my gut, like my intuition and yeah. follow that. Um, that's when things started to shift for me. And I actually quit yeah. reading books at that point for a little while. Like I just, I 365 days. I literally, all I did was listen to what was coming up from inside. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's important. That's so important. Cause I've definitely had a moment like that where you just have read so many books and you're like, this is not helping. I still yeah. feel, you know, and you're like, okay, all I have is me. Yeah. All I have is me now at that point. And to be able to understand, I, I share a little bit on that in the recent blog post I wrote talking about how being cheated on actually made me a better person. That. And it's mm-hmm. super vulnerable to share and there's shame and there's guilt and there's all these mm-hmm. things. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. The purpose of this life is to share it so other people can learn yeah. and take from your story and yeah, you still have to keep a part of it to yourself. But I think there's certain parts that that was a soul lesson for me. You yes. know, why would I not share that? Like that was so soulful for me. Like it was called, it was deep dive. You know? Yeah. So, I still love that. I love that so much. Um, and you, and definitely emphasizing your point of you were saying until you had gotten a certain mentor. So definitely invest mm-hmm. in a mentor or be around people that are Very doing same. amazing yeah. Um, because it's kind of definitely one of the ways that you get there. You cannot surround yourself by people around people yeah. that are not in yeah. that same space that you want to be. And yeah. you were saying, um, like, you know, emphasizing how we tend to get out of our bodies when it's really about being present mm-hmm. and learning even those different subtle body yearnings, your gut, mm-hmm. your heart. Like to me, I've talked about that too, and I'm sure you have as well, because mm-hmm. we're so aligned with just everything. Yeah. Just what your heart means and understanding what your gut means and knowing when to be intuitive and Mm -hmm. like really really listen to Mm -hmm. just the signs that you're always given on a daily basis Mm -hmm. so where can we find you um and tell us a little bit about your services and just you know where you're headed so we can just follow you (laughs) okay so um my website presenceismypurpose.com it got a little facelift recently um i do Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, so I do singular calls, um, which are super simple to schedule. The info is right there. Um, but I also do a month-long program um, that's like a call a week with email support. And 
you had mentioned how we had talked before about how I worked with a mentor and it was really the first time, I mean, single momming a teenager owning a house. Right. And I was like, I'm about to invest all this money in myself and I can't tell anybody because it's going to make me sound insane. Listen, best pennies I ever spent in my life. Um, Agreed. So Always. I think you yeah. should. Yeah. Like Always. it's, it's amazing. She changed my yeah. life and yeah. watching the domino effect of like, so, so she clues me in, like she was the one that was like, get in your body, like get all the way in your body. The yeah. domino effect that that made in the rest of my life. It's, it's positively affected the lives of people that I'm close to. It's so amazing. But so anyway, not to get off track. Um, I'm on Instagram. <laughs> I'm an Instagram as sovereignty activist and um, Facebook Martha Hornby. I don't have a business Facebook page. I kind of just mesh all of that stuff because really, I mean, you know, like I think that <clears throat> we're in a business of ourselves, like showing people, Absolutely. yeah, like we're <laughs> showing people through changing our lives and, you know, embracing our experiences and deciding who we want to be that, that they're able to do that too. So. I kind of, there's, I, I don't have a boundary there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there's just a, you know, we, we all do it to a certain degree, but I know that most people do it comfortably mm -hmm. when you do it out of the box, you experience so much more, you know, the roller coasters of life because you're discovering who you are, what you will and won't tolerate and just being a leader in your own right and not complaining and just really understanding your power mm -hmm. and your ability to manifest your best life and you know to me I say this all the time and this is a Sunday soul chat you know when I hear you're made in the image of God like I don't take that lightly and nope. I don't that's what you should chase after is okay well if that is so then what yeah. you know when you really learn about it and you really start tuning into yourself it's just so amazing because you'll keep being guided to where you need to go and you know the friction of life and the stress of all these different mm -hmm things that tug and pull at our even want to pursue our purpose mm -hmm. our purpose purpose you know they just diminish when we don't like live fully and wholly and just out of our boxes and you know really discovering what that means you know on like a deep soulful mm -hmm. powerful powerful level mm -hmm. so for everybody that has been joining us today um, we have some great things we're going to put in the comments mm -hmm. i'm also going to put her a link where you can find her um Shoshana, just before we leave, Frey, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Fall in love with your dark side. Absolutely. Hug it, love it, kiss yep. it, look at the meaning of it. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us for Sunday Soul Chat. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.